Hey guys, Squiff the Lazy Geek here and today we're going to adjust the backlash of the EQ6R mount and what I am going to describe um, is also applicable for the EQ6 Pro, the predecessor of this mount. Now I'm not inventing anything, uh, most actually all of what I will uh, present today is com comes from um, Astro Baby's breakdown of the EQ6 Pro. Um, so I'll be putting the link in the description down below. Now to be very clear as well, my EQ6R when it arrived had very, well it had almost no backlash in RA and had a bit of backlash in uh, declination, but nothing too horrid, nothing that actually made me want to like throw it out of the balcony uh, you know, and uh, and then stamp it and uh, burn it while dancing around it on a full moon. Um, yes, that's what I do with equipment that I don't like. Don't mess with me. Uh, but anyway, um, the backlash itself is basically just the play that you have when, like, I introduced backlash for this video, just for the video. But you see, when I'm moving side by side the telescope, it's moving a little bit. It's moving by maybe like a degree, maybe less. And so this is what we're going to adjust. Now, the good news is you do not need a lot of tools and you do not need to open up the mount. There are cases where you need to open up the mount to adjust the backlash. Uh, like behind those doors are the actual belt mechanism of the mount. And if the belt is getting less tight than it used to be, you can adjust it in there. Uh, but for me, it hasn't been the case, so I am not going to touch it. But very simply, you take off those uh, three screws. Those two ones at the top are very long. This one is very short. It gives you access to the belt. And uh, next, like in, at the center of the belt, there's some kind of like raised knob that has a screw in there. You can tighten it or loosen it to adjust the belt tension. So it's not uh, the most complicated thing in the world. Now here, what we have is, for me, my declination at this stage has backlash, as we can see. So let's have a look at how uh, we can adjust that. Uh, but before we do, actually, <laughs> let me just tell you what you need. You need a five millimeter Allen wrench. And if you have a short, you know, like the type where it's very short at this, uh, this side, it's easier because then, you know, you have more space to actually insert this little Allen wrench and you want a two millimeter uh, Allen wrench. I do not know what the equivalent is in Imperial units because here we use standard units. <laughs> uh, so um, let's have a look at the mount. Okay, so we're looking at the mount and the first thing that I want you to look at is those, um, this screw here, 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 and there's actually another one that's probably outside of your field of view, that, which is symmetrical to this one. It's on the opposite side, it's here. That's one set of screws we, we want to look at. There's another set is a recessed screw that is in this little uh, hole here. And there's one actually just at the other end um, are, are along this axis. So they're on the same axis. So. What happens is that those four bigger screws, as far as I understand, one of their their purpose is to hold the uh, the motor in place and all the whole assembly in place. And those two screws um, at the front and at the back of the uh, of the axis are uh, used to uh, adjust the backlash. And more particularly, uh, the one at the uh, bottom can be used to uh, basically. Like it, it, you need to loosen the one in the bot at the bottom, for example, to be able to push the and to uh, to turn to um, tighten the one at the top. And the one at the top, when you, you tighten it, it will actually bring the worm assembly closer to the gear. And this is what we're going to do to remove that horrible backlash. Now, in the um, EQ6R, oops. So I have to properly. There it is. I can feel that backlash, maybe it's not super visible for you, but it is there. Now what we do for this, and it's a bit different than the, instruction, the instructions that I've seen from one point, but to start with, we're going to follow exactly the instructions, which is to loosen up a little bit those big screws using the five millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, they're loosened. I didn't do much. Um, and now we can play with the two screws uh, here. Now, one of the things though, in what Astro Baby describes is that you want to, you know, pull out this screw. So uh, loosen this screw until you feel, feel backlash. Then you um, tighten it again until there's a little bit of backlash. And then you're gonna be um, tightening this screw there on the other side to, until you remove the backlash. And that's what you do. The problem here, at least for my mount, is that 
you can see the backlash looks much worse because I think the whole motor assembly is actually able to turn now that I have slightly um, uh, loosened these four screws. So we cannot know what the actual backlash is until I actually uh, re -screw, like rescrew in, re retighten those four uh, bigger screws. So what we're going to do is that I know that I have backlash. So I am just going to loosen this screw a little bit and then tighten this one. And then we're going to see what the backlash is like. Now I'm doing maybe like a quarter or maybe a third of a turn at a time. Okay, so I have tightened a bit the screw at the top and now, so I have loosened here, tightened here. You never want to tighten both like crazily on both sides. Now, now we want to re-tighten those screws. I tighten them a little bit, one at a time, um, not fully at first, just finger tight and then fully tight to make sure that like, they have the same amplitude of movement. Okay, and now let's look at our backlash. Well, <laughs> there's no backlash. It's gone. It's gone, Jim. So <laughs> that's almost disappointing. Yeah, it's like stuck like a rock. So there's still one more thing to do. We might have um, pushed the worm against the wheel the worm wheel, whatever we call it, so much that we don't have any backlash, but we might have binding. So what you really want to do is basically turn on the mount and make sure that it works. So I need to take my hand controller for this to work. I'll be right back. So here I am with my hand controller. Um, we're in EQ mode. I am not going to do anything besides just turn the axis. Uh, I ah, Binding. There we go. So I tightened too much. We have some binding and I have to adjust this. To adjust that, I will need to be loosening this screw here um, a bit more. So let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, I've loosened the four big screws. I am going to um, actually unfasten, yeah, unfasten the untighten, loosen. There we are, loosen this one at the at the front a tiny bit there we are and now that i've loosened it i will tighten a little bit this one but just like not too much because i don't want to break anything okay i'm done let's fasten the four, four screws again so again gradually And let's look at the backlash. I still don't have backlash, which is a good thing. Do I still have binding of the gears? Let's find out. Looking good for now. So ideally you'd want to actually do that 360 degrees, uh, just to be sure. For me, that means that we need to re remove by my newt, so I'm going to go almost all the way and I'll just complete that after the video. I'll probably just remove the newt. Whoops, I have a cable that's snagging. It's not good. I need to adjust that. Bad cable. Okay, much better. <laughs> and we find out some issues at the same time. And here we are. We've basically checked the mount across the whole um, declination axis almost because of this handle. But otherwise, like I'll be, I'll be checking the last mile there. But I think we are good now. So there is no backlash that I can discern. So if I try to like move the telescope sideways here, I don't see any movement. And I actually don't have much, if any, backlash in RA. The only problem in R8 I have is the counterweight bar that's not like super stable in this. I actually used an Allen wrench to tighten this um, as much as I could and I don't want to break it either. Um, so I will not show too much the RA axis but I will show you where everything is located. So here's the RA axis. So the, the bigger screws that will want to uh, untighten a little tiny bit is um, this one here. So we have one, 
We have two at the back here, we have a third one here, and we have the fourth one diam diam diametrically uh, opposed to that one, so around uh, there. And so those are the four screws to, un to loosen a tiny bit. Um, once they're loosened, you'll want to play with two screws. There is one that's actually here. Um, again, it's the same two, two millimeter um, Allen wrench and another one that's on the opposite side. And just like before, the one at the top um, is the one that will be, when you tighten it, it pushes uh, the worm against the gear. And you want to do exactly the same thing. One of the differences that I've seen, at least for my mount, is that even after I have the bolts untightened a little bit, I'm not able to do the jiggle like I did with the declination axis. So it's actually much better, much easier to tell whether I still have backlash or not. Which means I can be adjusting stuff um, to my heart's content without having to retighten the bigger bolt, which makes it easier. Uh, and then once I'm done, I retighten the bigger bolt. And just like the declination axis, we will want to run the RA axis through its whole motion to make sure through 360 degrees to make sure that there is no binding. Because you could see that I had binding in the declination axis. Now, the fun thing is, getting binding after this adjustment it was the first time that it was happening to me so i'm almost happy it happened for the video uh, but really it's something that we want um, to avoid but now i have a backlash free mount oh my precious and that's pretty much it for this video, uh, which was, I hope, nice and short. Um, I'll be doing the same th soon for my AZ EQ5 GT, which I got recently, as you may have seen from another video. Uh, also, please be very careful when you do this. I am not an expert at all. I don't have a lot of mechanical knowledge. Um, so, you know, maybe something in my video is wrong. So please go down in the comments as well to make sure that everything is fine. I typically pin the comment that tells me like, hey, you're wrong kind of stuff. So people know, you know, what's been, uh, what's been going on with the video. And uh, otherwise, if you think, oh, this is nice, no backlash at all. So if you think that this video was useful, if you liked it, um, if you want me to do more videos, and I do, I do a lot of videos about tons of little uh, things, whether it's imaging nights, whether it's tips and tricks for DSO astrophotography, whether it's uh, uh, tuning stuff like that, although it's my first, I think, or whether like tons of uh, uh, super technical content about uh, astro cameras and sensors, uh, feel free to go down, click on the little subscribe button, the notification bell next to it um, to make sure that you're notified when I put it, put in a new video. And otherwise, if uh, you know, feel free to go down. If you like this video, click the like button, leave a comment down below. If I was wrong about something or if, even if I was not wrong about something, I, I, I like comments. And uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.